Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. And today is gonna be our housing market update video, but I'm gonna do this update video a lot differently and I'm gonna give you guys my new hypothesis since now we know the Federal Reserve has essentially pivoted and started QE despite what we're seeing in the news. And how did they do that, guys? They issued $25 billion in bailout over the weekend to help with the bank runs, which is especially frustrating if you're like me, eliminating risk and on the sideline, improving my purchasing power. So when we see that guys, we know that more than likely all that's gonna do is cause inflation to go higher. And not only is inflation gonna go higher, we also saw over the last couple of days, mortgage interest rates or rather the 10 year plummet. So the thing is guys, is what does all of that mean to the housing market and how will we now start seeing prices crash. And I'm going to go over today, guys, my hypothesis on how I believe the housing market is going to react to all of these recent changes. Because the question is, is how are we going to get the current homeowners at a 3%, 4% interest rate? Why will those people start selling? Okay. We need a little bit of forced selling in order to get enough inventory to have a balanced housing market. Because the reality is, is even though it's surging in new construction, we also need more people to sell. So I'm going to talk to you guys about why I believe people will need to be forced to sell, right? And I'm not talking about anyone that purchased 2022 to right now. It's easy to see how those people would need to sell. So buckle up, hold on, and I hope you like my hypothesis. And before I begin, guys, understand my own situation. I own a home. I converted my primary residence to a rental. I currently have a 2.125% on my mortgage. So I also asked myself, in what situation would I cash out on my house, right? What situation would I feel the necessity to sell my house and put myself in an environment with higher interest rates and higher home prices? So I really, really guys, over the last 48 hours, I have been thinking so deeply on what happens next. So again, do me a favor. And for all of that deep thinking, critical thinking, do me a favor. Just like the video real quick. Share the video if you can, you guys. Comment below. You guys know that I love hearing from you. I love reading the comment section. So shoot me a comment below. So first we have to figure out how many people purchased homes prior to 2022 with a mortgage, right? Because it's those people, right? With the low interest rates that we need to sell. Essentially the market needs to purge as best as possible 2% and 3% interest rates, right? So again, I had to ask myself, okay, now that we're kind of, you know, now that we have a little bit more data, now we see the economy breaking apart and then we see the Fed pivot and bail out. What does this mean, right? What's gonna happen next in the housing market? So again, let's figure out how many people purchased prior to 2022 and let's figure out how many purchased in 2022 and on. And remember the difference. If you purchased in 2022 to right now, more than likely you're trapped. Okay, the normal person, right? On average, you're trapped in your house. You can no longer play a game. You must live in that property. But prior to 2022, there are still people that are holding on to a 3% interest rate with 30, 40% in equity. So again, it's those people, you know, 40% in equity, 3% interest rate. We need to ask ourselves in what situation would they have to sell their house. All right. So I'm going to take you guys to the U.S. Census Bureau real quick. So here's the U.S. Census Bureau. There was supposed to be a report dropped on the third. I could not find it. So this is the fourth quarter of 2022. Okay. All housing units. But what I want to start is I want to talk about occupied homes. Okay. So roughly right now, as you can see here, we have 129 million homes that are occupied. And I really want to point out that I am taking both owner occupied houses and renter houses. Now what I could have done you guys, and I really want you to pay attention here. I could have just used the owner occupied houses. Okay. I could have just used that, but the reason I'm also using these 44 million rental houses in my hypothesis is I'm seeing commercial real estate get destroyed. I'm seeing that the rental market is getting damaged, a uh, long-term rental, short-term rental. I'm seeing the fact that, you know, a lot of these investing firms need to refinance out of the one, two, 3% interest rates on into seven, eight, nine, 10% interest rates. So I'm gonna take the rental houses, even though I shouldn't take those rental houses and we should only look at owner occupied houses, I'm still gonna include that in these numbers so we can get an overall picture and not just look at 
owner occupied houses. Okay. So again, I'm going to take this 129 million houses. Obviously not all of those 129 million houses have a mortgage. Okay. So what we know is 75% of home purchases, a mortgage is used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 129 million houses. Okay. You see that 129 million, that's a huge number. And I'm going to multiply that by 75. Okay. Or 75%, 0.75. That gives us 96.7 million houses right now that basically have a mortgage. Now, this is a blunt math formula that I'm doing with you guys. Obviously we can really crunch this information, but I'm going to keep it simple. So right now we have 96.7 million houses with a mortgage roughly, right? We also have to differentiate how many people purchased in 2022 and how many people purchased at the beginning of this year. Take a look. All right, so I'm at Statista and according to this info, you guys in 2022, you can see here, and this is not updated, it's not final, it doesn't appear. We had almost 6 million homes sold in 2022. Okay, so we're gonna take 5.95 million homes sold in 2022. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull this calculator back up and we're gonna subtract the people that just purchased, which is 5,950,000. So we're gonna subtract that. That leaves us with 9,800,000 people that purchased before 2022 with a mortgage roughly, but we're also gonna subtract 1 million homes that have been sold roughly. This is rough, you guys, but about a million homes have already sold in 2023. Okay. Roughly again, this is not hundred percent accurate, but, but the point will be made regardless. So I'm going to subtract another 1 million. Okay. 1 million homes. All right. So that means 89.8 million homes have a mortgage right now that was purchased prior to 2022. So that's the number we're going to use. And again, you guys, I can knock off 44 million of that. If I don't want to account investment properties, do y'all see what I'm saying? If I only want to account owner occupied properties, my hypothesis is even better, but we're going to add both of them. We're going to say we need 89.8 million homeowners to somehow need to sell their house. Now I'm going to call this hypothesis, the cash out hypothesis. All right. So we're going to, again, we're going to look at the 89 million households and we're going to ask ourselves in what situation would a ton of people have to cash out. And I use the word cashed out instead of forced sell because these people still have a tremendous amount of equity. Let me show you. All right, guys, you see that I've already started drawing a little bit because you guys know my drawing is absolutely horrible, but this is my cash out hypothesis slashed forced selling. Okay. So here's this huge box right here. All right. So here's a huge box right here. These are going to represent all of the home owners that purchased prior to 2022. And we're going to assume that these homes have low interest, low interest rates. Okay. And we're going to say they have high equity. All right. So high equity, low interest rates. Now, here, right here, this little box represents anyone that purchased in 2022 and on. It's really easy to understand how these people can start defaulting and leading to foreclosure. But again, this hypothesis is not the foreclosure hypothesis. This is the cash out hypothesis. So again, anyone that purchased right now should have a high interest rate, okay? And should have zero equity. Okay. Now I just want to make a point, you guys, I'm not going to talk about normal life. Okay. So the big box, people will have to cash out regardless of interest rates because of divorce, job relocation. Maybe they don't like their neighbors. Maybe people want to downsize. There's a bunch of reasons why normal life, that big box people will sell. But remember you guys, remember there is about, we're going to round up and say there's 90 million. Okay. So right now there's 90 million homes you know, and homeowners that are basically sitting uh, pretty well as far as home ownership, they have low interest rates and they have a high amount of equity, okay? But remember the little box over here, and again, you guys, the thing is, is I can subtract 40 million of that 90 million and really, you know, and really slam my point home, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna take the entire picture and we're gonna talk about it, okay? So that 2022 box represents only six point. Nine, five million. Okay. 
Now, if we just look at the 6.95 million, you guys, and look at that little box, in order for those people to have to force sell, it's probably gonna be a short sell situation, financial distress, could be a foreclosure. That process can take one to two years, okay? So I'm not gonna look at this, all right? But again, these people right here, okay? High risk. Those are high risk people, all right? You guys follow me so far? I hope you do. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at this big box because the question is, is how do we get inventory from that big box of people with, again, low, low rates, high equity, okay? And again, we're gonna round up. We're gonna say there's 90 million. And I know it's not exactly accurate, but it's gonna get us to where we need to be, okay? So again, pre-2022, Low rates, high equity, 90 million houses, roughly with a mortgage. So here's the thing, I can almost guarantee you a substantial amount of those 90 million homeowners are under some type of financial distress when comparing to where they were at when they became homeowners. Because remember, when these people became homeowners, life was really cheap and actually really easy. Money was coming from everywhere. As we move on to 2023, and, and a lot of people know this, we are starting to see insane inflation. We're starting to see things break apart. We're going to start seeing the fear. So a lot of these people right now, you guys, are asking themselves, I can guarantee you, should I sell? and cash out. Should I just sell this house? Should I rent and should I pocket 50, 100, $150,000? Again, how are these people gonna be forced to cash out, okay? So here's the answer, you guys, defaults. We will have a wave of defaults. And, and I'm not necessarily saying that's only gonna happen in the housing market because if it happens in the housing market, remember that's probably gonna happen and start with people that purchase 2022 and on. But what about these people, right? What about these people? Number one, default, okay? And we're gonna take a look at this in detail, but number one, okay? Number one thing, credit card debt, okay? I'm telling you guys, credit card debt is number one. If I can sell my house, cash in $100,000, pay $30,000 in credit cards, and pocket another $70,000, that may be appealing to me, but here's a good thing, you guys, I don't have credit card debt. And the thing is, the reason I don't have credit card debt is the worst possible debt you can actually be in. Again, credit card debt is the worst possible debt people can be in. Let me show you where we're at with credit card debt. All right, guys, so here's our FRED economic data consumer credit card debt. And I just wanted to point out since about April of 2021, <laughs> this is crazy. Since about April of 2021, it skyrocketed upward. Look at this. The credit card debt, y'all, is almost at $1 trillion. Again, on one hand, we have almost a trillion dollars in credit card debt, almost you know, more than double where we were at in 2008. We all know that credit card debt is absolutely horrible. We know, most of us know that it can be a prison of financial ruin. So again, what I'm saying is, is if I'm a homeowner, I bought before 2022, say I'm drowning in credit card debt, $40,000, $50,000. Again, if I could sell my house, pay all that debt off, pocket $50,000, maybe I do that and maybe I just rent, right? And why would I just rent, you guys? Because there's more inventory with renting right now, more rental inventory, and rent is going down in many markets. Some markets it's not. That's why you have to become an expert on your local housing market. But now, you guys, let's see how many people at this point are starting to default on credit card debt. So again, Fred Economic Data, delinquency rate on credit cards. So right now we're at 2.25%. Now, historically, you guys, where we sit about 2.6, you know, 2.5% if you look pre-COVID. So we're not yet at pre-COVID and we shouldn't be yet at pre-COVID because we just got out of a massive amount of money printing. In fact, I don't understand how so many people are in credit card debt so quickly when we got a bunch of money. That, that means that most people are spending their money like crazy. But what I do want to point out is even though we're under pre-pandemic, okay, again, remember default rate credit cards is usually up here, but look at the trajectory of the defaults. The trajectory of the defaults is shooting up. I just want to point it out, delinquencies are shooting up for credit card debts. And what that will do in turn is really bring light to how many Americans are really, really in trouble. And here's the thing, you guys, I, I don't think that I'm wrong about the housing market. I think that I'm too early. I think we're a little bit too early because 
What I did not anticipate is all of the flip-flopping with the Fed. I was hoping the Fed was going to do what they said they were going to do, right? Or even just a little bit, right? Just carry on, right? But the fact that they bailed out banks over the weekend, to me, that shows, you know, Q, that shows quantitative easing, right? So I just think that we're ahead of the party, you guys. And, you know, and the reason I think we're so far ahead of the game on this one is the Federal Reserve. I mean, they're in control. But okay, so number one, defaults on credit cards. I can guarantee you guys, many people that have credit card debt are also homeowners that purchased prior to 2022. But that's only one thing. Number two, okay? Number two, car loans. Y'all see where I'm going with this? What I'm saying is, is now that the Fed has printed more money, making inflation even worse, devaluing our dollar even more, we can safely assume that things are just gonna stay this unaffordable. In fact, this for the time being may be a new way of life, okay? Being that it's a new way of life, I'm telling you guys, most people spend their money recklessly. The credit card debt is only gonna go up. Obviously, we know that the default rates are gonna go up. And I think what's going to happen, you guys, is as we move forward, again, things are more expensive. The default rates for credit cards and for car loans is just going to skyrocket. But let me show you car loans now. All right, guys, so here's a Fed economic data chart for car loans. We have $1.4 trillion in car loans right now. So we have a massive, massive increase in car loans. And again, the, one of the reasons why that is is the prices were just too high. All right, now here's the default rate, you guys. Again, this is Fred Economic Data. And this, you know, and I just wanna make a point that both sets of data I showed you is only the Q4 of 2022, which means we're actually in a worse situation right now. Again, you guys, the data I'm using is only up to Q4 of 2022. We're in a much worse situation right now, but this is the data that I'm referencing. And here's the default rate for cars, okay? And again, what we're looking at is the trajectory of the defaults. Do you see this? There has been a straight skyrocketing upward for defaults. So it's almost at pre-lockdowns. You can see here when we came out of lockdowns, we were at about 2.28%. So it is higher. So we have a higher delinquency rate right now than we did when we first opened. So again, you guys, here's the situation. The market needs to purge these 2 and 3% interest rates, okay? In order for that to happen, there's going to need to be some type of forced selling, right? And it's easy to see what will happen in, you know, again, 2022 on, that's easy. What about the other 90 million houses with low rates and high equity? And I'm telling you guys, as we move forward, if the Fed, again, does not control the inflation, they're battling inflation, but they're making the inflation worse because they just printed more money. How is, how is this possible? But here's the thing, you guys, they're bailing out the rich. They're crushing the poor, they're crushing the middle class, lower class, middle, middle class, even the upper class right now is getting crushed. And if I'm an investor, right, and I just lost a whole bunch of money in the stock market or crypto and I own 50 houses, more than likely, you guys, I'm going to sell some of those houses right now while the market's you know fairly stable. We only have moderate declines in a lot of areas. We have significant declines in other areas like Austin and all over California, Boise, uh, Phoenix, things like that. But it is about local housing market. But all I'm saying, as more people get into debt, whether they're an investor or whether they're in a homeowner, things are going to become more and more uncomfortable for them. And I'm telling you guys, for them, the easy way out is going to be to cash out on their property and have to sell. And when they do that, they'll probably pay off their car loans, their credit card loans. And more than likely, you guys, they're not going to repurchase yet because things are still so unaffordable. And the thing is, the rental market right now is softening. Take a look. And I'll do a video on this, you guys, but this is Redfin. This just came out a few days ago. Uh, rent is plummeting. So rental market is softening. So instead of purchasing an overvalued house, probably people are just going to rent with $70,000 in their pocket, right? And wait out the housing market. That may be a great option for some people. Sell, pay your debt off, pocket $70,000, rent until the housing market resets. And just for case in point, let me zoom in here, you guys, just so you could really, really see this. Here's the leading declines in rent. And this is just year over year. Austin, 6.5%. New Orleans down 6.4%. Phoenix down 4 Minneapolis, 3.4%. Dallas, Baltimore, Houston down one9 Birmingham, Chicago, Denver, Virginia, all of these metro areas have a decline in rent, but that's year over year. We have monthly declines as well on a national average. As you can see here, the rental growth is declining. That is a fact on a nationwide average. Now, obviously, again, local housing markets do matter. I, I lumped in rental homes as well. So I also want to point out what's going on in the commercial market as far as potential 
delinquencies and defaults, which will continue to surge. Let's just read this little paragraph. A consensus has formed in the commercial mortgage-backed security market with many analysts and investors anticipating high delinquency rates in 2023. The biggest impact could come from loans slated to mature in 2023 with interest rates considerably higher than a year ago and with uncertainty in the U.S. economy in 2023. Many maturing loans could face challenges getting re financed. Okay. Understand that this problem that I just read to you is not going away and that problem will get worse. And essentially a lot of commercial purchasers, whether it's commercial residential or commercial commercial, a lot of those loans are up for refinance, meaning they are going to be forced to refinance because they're at the end of their lending terms. And more than likely, they're going to be refinancing out of a, a, a sub 5% interest rate into something potentially around 10%. So if many of those investors can no longer cash flow based on the refinance rates, what do you think they'll do? Now, it is possible that they will hold, right? They'll just pay the holding costs. But there's also going to be a substantial amount of investors that are going to be forced to cash out. So again, you guys, what I'm saying is, is this next round of skyrocketing defaults are going to force these well-positioned homeowners to cash out when they cash out, as long as they don't purchase, if they rent because they want to wait out the housing market, like I want to wait out the housing market, it's going to lead to more inventory. But then the question is, is Travis, Travis, the interest rates are going down. The interest rates are going down. The world is falling. We need to buy right now because home values will only go up. That's possible y'all. Right. And I look at that all of the time and I will change my opinion as data comes in. But I don't see that. OK, let me show you why. I need you guys to take into consideration over the last 10 years, home value went up with sub 5% interest rates. All right. This goes to 2013. 2013, average interest rates were mid to low fours, even in the threes. Look at we had rates in the threes for quite some time. And then they went up to the low fours back in the threes, went up to almost five, but it never hit 5% in the last 10 years. Years. So even if rates go down, say to this tier, say to this tier right here from five to 6%, okay, right here. So if rates continue to plummet, which they're not yet, right? Rates are around six and a half percent still. So we're still in this upper tier right here, okay? But say they go down, say the quantitative easing does happen, say the Fed does pivot. And I tell you guys this all the time, as long as rates stay in the 5%, we should be okay because for the last 10 years, our equity growth in our housing market ran off three and 4% interest rates. Do y'all see that? So what this means is what we're seeing right now with people buying is, is predominantly fear of missing out. They're still not looking at fundamentals. I don't think people are looking at, you know, the long term about what potentially can happen. And listen, you guys, I want to make clear, I don't have no crystal ball. All right. I have experience at doing the wrong thing. I have experience at doing the right thing. And currently right now I'm renting. And here's the thing, you guys, because the Fed wants to add to the inflation. They want to slow down the train. I think it potentially could be a slower ride to home ownership as far as, you know, purchasing a home that you love at a deal that you love, right? Which is very hard to find right now. Now, I'm also saying this. I still think as long as you hunt, okay, that some people in some markets could possibly find a good, possibly great deal. I'm trying to find that myself and it is so hard right now. And that's why I'm saying for the most part, you guys, everyone should hold right again, unless you can find a solid deal that you can't pass up. And we, and you can prove that to yourself by like cash flow, right? Rental market analysis, price analysis, right? Job market affordability, you know, things like that. So I'm not saying that, you know, that some people can't find a great deal. What I'm saying is the majority of us need to continue to wait, because if we purchase right now, we're going to join the people at high risk, in this box. Okay. I'm not going to be put in this box. These are the people right here. Okay. These are the high risk foreclosure default people, roughly about 7 million Americans. Okay. Right now are at risk. Okay. I'm not going to put myself in that box. Just, I would rather just rent a little bit longer. And the other thing guys, is I really doubt that I'll be moving back into my rental property. I'm probably just going to extend my lease. And now that the rental market in my local housing market, I am seeing flaws and I'm seeing it fall apart. I'm actually either going to reduce the rent here by negotiating with my landlord. I'll probably knock off maybe 10% of rent, or I'm going to move into another property that better suits my living situation because 
I need to be less stressed out, right? There's a sense of mental health when purchasing a home. So instead of me being chained to a home, I'm probably just gonna rent a house that is better suited for my family and I. But again, you guys, here's what I'm saying. There's still a lot of dust in the air. Homes are still... <laughs> <laughs> greatly overvalued and really maxed out and buying right now and buying right now essentially puts us in a box of people that are currently chained to their house. So again, if you want to buy right now and you want to just go YOLO and you have a fear of missing out, understand that more than likely you're going to join that high risk box of 7 million Americans. Now, other than that, guys, let me know how I did on my hypothesis. Let me know how you feel about it. And other than that, I really appreciate you following along with me on this journey. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know, I wish you luck and I hope you win.